Hello everyone and welcome to Skillcapped. I'm Notorious Dub and in Valorant we have one of the more difficult to learn and control spray patterns and recoil control mechanics that make everyone believe that winning extended fights is random. When in reality it's the people that master the unique mechanics that set themselves apart and skyrocket themselves to the rank where they deserve to be. Which is exactly why today I'm going to be covering the most common mistakes people make when they're learning to control recoil and spray patterns and all of the niche tips and tricks that come along with it. That way you can up your game and stop relying on RNG to win gunfights and start finishing off those extended fights to help you win a ton more games and get you to the rank you deserve to be at. But as always, before we get too deep into the video, we have to start with our question of the day. And today I want to ask you guys, what's your favorite skin in Valorant? Now for me, I love the Reaver Vandal. It just hits different. Whenever you start stacking up those kills, that ping sound is so satisfying. And it honestly feels like I'm better at fighting when I'm using the skin, even if it's just a placebo. But I know other skins have huge followings and people love them as well, which is exactly why I want to hear from you. So let me know in the comments down below, what is your favorite skin in Valorant right now? All right, so the first biggest thing to realize is that Valorant has a random my spray pattern across all guns. Whereas games like CSGO, which is where a ton of you guys come from, they have a completely standardized spray pattern for each weapon that you can learn almost perfectly. And when I say randomized spray pattern, I mean both on the horizontal plane and the vertical plane, making it very inconsistent on what the spray pattern looks like. And also very randomized when trying to learn spray patterns because the bullets are flying to different areas at the same parts of the spray as before. So with this randomized spray pattern increasing my time to kill, why should I even try to learn recoil control and spray patterns? Well, even in light of all the negatives I've talked about, spray enemies down is crucial to the game and is where the majority of your kills are actually going to come from unless you're just a one tap headshot machine. And not to mention spraying down for kills is often a lot easier than focusing on going for tap kills because you're getting more bullets off, getting tags to slow the enemies down, and pumping out consistent damage. So if you're the second man entering the bomb site, you should be spraying as much as possible. And luckily for us, the recoil and spray patterns are actually very straightforward when it comes to being able to control them consistently. It's just different than in any game we've seen so far. But before we get into how to start controlling your recoil properly, remember, if you're serious about improving, then go to skillcapped.com to unlock our hyper improvement system that will teach you how to win more gunfights, master your agent, and so much more. It's also backed by our rank improvement guarantee, so you really have nothing to lose. So come join over half a million satisfied members of Skillcapped. Improve that KDA and get the rank you've always wanted at skillcapped.com. Link is in the description below. Now, 80% of controlling your recoil and spray pattern comes down to countering the movement, and there's vertical and horizontal movements in the spray patterns of Valorant. So let's start with vertical movement because that's where you're going to be getting most of your kills off learning to control that first initial vertical movement. So in general, weapons in Valorant have spray patterns that follow a line straight up until they make a hard turn going horizontally. And on this line, there's going to be a ton of deviation left and right, and even a little bit straight up. But learning to control your recoil should be you counting your bullets and figuring out how many shots it takes before your bullets start straying off to the side. And over half the fights you get into in game are going to be determined by your ability to control this one line. And it's going to be a little bit different for every gun, so count the bullets for the gun you're trying to work on. But for the Phantom, it takes about 10 shots before the weapon becomes too random horizontally. But it is slightly randomized up to that point, so sometimes it can be up to 12 shots before it shifts horizontally, and sometimes it could be as little as eight bullets before the deviation starts. So I recommend that eight bullet threshold. So you need to be practicing the ability to pull down the perfect amount every single time so you get your shots off and keep your bullets in the area where they can hit the enemy in the head the entire time. So it's time to start practicing. Pick a ring on the target in the shooting range and start with your first bullet hitting the very top of that ring and practice pulling down for eight shots and keeping your bullets perfectly at that headshot level of your accuracy that you picked out. And this is super beneficial because even if you don't hit that headshot, the Phantom does take five hits to kill and being extremely accurate with eight every burst is going to skyrocket your win percentage in duels because you only need to hit five out of eight shots but after those eight to twelve bullets that you fire your bullets will stabilize and stay at that level vertically which should be headshot level optimally if you're putting it correctly for all spray bullets afterwards it will stay at that headshot level so pause after those bullets stabilize and practice again but then it transitions into horizontal movement which is where this whole thing gets nice and tricky now with horizontal movement the rng factor starts to take a little bit more of a foothold and when you reach that peak vertical recoil threshold the bullets for almost all guns, immediately go to the right of your crosshair and quickly back left. Once again, for the Phantom, there are going to be two or three bullets that shoot to the right of your crosshair and then it pulls hard back left. So the next step for practice, what you're going to want to do is practice that transition from vertical recoil control to that first spread of horizontal recoil control to the right. So once you're comfortable controlling that initial vertical movement, extend the amount of bullets that you're shooting in your spray pattern by about four. So you get to the point where it's pulling back left again, and then reset your spray and do it again over and over. So you can ingrain that in your muscle memory until it becomes a natural movement every time you spray. This is going to take you from about eight accurate bullets to about 12 and only needing to hit five bullets out of 12 instead of five bullets out of eight is going to 
be extremely consistent whenever you get in those slightly extended traits. But then the bullets are going to start swaying left and right sporadically until you run out of bullets in your magazine. And that's when we get into the biggest advantage that pros and top tier players have over the general player base. They know how to read the recoil instead of control it. Now it is imperative to practice controlling your recoil the traditional way we talked about of counting bullets before you move on to this more difficult, but way more efficient form of recoil control because you will already have a foundation to build upon and you don't actually have to think and react. It's just a muscle memory thing that you're doing every time. But whenever you're spraying your bullets out, take a look at your gun and you're going to realize your gun model shifts to the right before your bullets start swinging right and the gun model will shift left just before the bullets start shooting to the left. And your crosshair will actually do the exact same. This movement is what you're going to be reading to correct your recoil. In game, you're going to be focusing on your target, but your peripheral view is going to take a little note of those little pulls that your crosshair and weapon are doing. You're going to feel that pull, and you're going to be able to get more accurate shots off way faster once you get this strategy down. So go back to our target from before. Spray out bullets until you get to the horizontal spread portion. And here, focus solely on watching your gun and your crosshair. Whenever it pulls to the right, pull your mouse back to the left. Whenever it pulls left, pull your crosshair right as quickly as possible without worrying about being accurate on the target. We can focus on accuracy later, but what this is going to do is get you used to correcting your recoil off reading the movement instead of the set spray pattern you've been following so far. And eventually it's going to become a subconscious thing that you do and you can then translate that into trying to be accurate with those bullets as well. And keep in mind, this is going to take some time to get used to and a ton of repetitions before you've mastered it. But take your aim to the practice dummy to the right, set it to 20 meters and spray away. And here you wanna start focusing on your target, but only watch your gun and your crosshair in your peripheral and adjust your aim accordingly to slowly start hitting more and more shots every magazine. And this is specifically the mechanic that makes people think Valorant is so random when it comes to extended traits because most people don't realize they have to move their mouse a different way every single time and you have to practice on being able to adapt your spray throughout the fight. But there is one major strategy we still have to talk about before we get into the niche tips that help you pick up kills and that's spray transferring. Now spray transferring is the perfect way to start picking up multi-fragging because most of the time if you have multiple people in your line of sight you don't have time to go for burst or get some shots off and get back behind cover. Sometimes you just gotta hit that crouch button, pump out bullets, and go for the hero play. And if you've gone through the steps I talked about earlier, then you already have a strong foundation to start to learn with. And you can now pivot that into spray transfers and multi-kills with ease. Now the entry level of spray transferring is realizing that once your bullets hit their maximum height of recoil, it's going to stay there. So you can essentially just swipe your gun across the enemy's head and hope to hit a bullet to snag that kill very quickly. And close range, this is actually super effective because the odds of one bullet hitting is crazy high with the fire rate of the Phantom as long as you have it at headshot level. And it also works pretty well for the Vandal too. So plant your feet, finish off that first kill and keep your mouse on the same horizontal plane whenever you swipe your gun across the enemy's head over and over until you snag the kill. But of course, we do wanna start adding consistency and accuracy to our shots. So go back to the shooting range, set up the practice bots to all be there and pick out two or three that you're going to focus on specifically spray transferring to. Start by aiming at the head of the first enemy or flick to them, pick up the kill and immediately while keeping your mouse button pressed down, flick to the next enemy while controlling your recoil. Pick up the kill and do the exact same thing for the next enemy. But you should have that muscle memory ingrained as soon as you get to the max height of vertical recoil, you're going to start moving it left and right instead of up and down. You should already have that ingrained. But keep in mind these flicks should be the fastest flicks you can possibly muster because you don't want to take your time swapping to the next enemy, get a few shots off in transition, and end up losing your recoil control where you actually were and completely whiff those shots. Optimally, you want to swap targets with one or zero bullets being fired off in the transition time, that way your bullets are going exactly where you hit that last enemy at. This is also because the quicker you get your cursor on the enemy, the faster you can get lucky and get a quick hit off, and the faster you're going to be able to adjust that recoil and snag the kill in the meantime. And once you're somewhat comfortable with that, focus on swapping off of your target immediately by predicting when you're going to pick up the kills so you waste even less bullets and to mix it up even further you can focus on getting kills with body shots so you make the spray transfer that little bit more difficult. Also don't be scared to pick out a fourth and fifth bot to spray transfer to because five kills with one clip is going to be the ultimate goal for spray transfer. Now let's talk about the niche tips you should be working into your game so you can start picking up more of those spray kills and the first is the crab walk or the CSGO peak. In CSGO, just like in Valorant, when you're crouching, even if you're moving as fast as possible in your crouch, you're still going slow enough to be almost fully accurate. This gives you the ability to fully start spraying out accurate bullets while swinging an angle, moving to cover, or just moving to throw the enemies off their aim. And the moving back to cover portion of this is going to be the most important, because often you're going to whiff or get caught out and need to get back to cover. So instead of pulling your knife out and struggling to get back while the enemies continue to slow you down with bullet tags, crouch down and crab walk back to safety as you're getting your accurate shots off and it gives you the chance to at least get lucky and pick up that free kill. And deathmatch is going to be the perfect place to practice this. Keep your sound on and anytime you get caught out or hear an enemy about to peek you, hit that crab peek on them and spray them down. And for our last tip, of course, I have to talk about the outer line of firing error. 
And if you're a beginner or just someone who struggles with spray downs, go to your outer line crosshair setting. Keep the dot kind of small so it doesn't affect you too much in the normal gameplay, but set the outer line offset to the max and turn firing error on. What this is going to do for you is give you a visual that tells you exactly where the max firing error is going to be for the Phantom and the Vandal. So whenever you're unsure why your bullets aren't hitting or whenever you reach that max recoil vertically, you have something on the screen that shows you exactly where your bullet's going to be going. Now keep in mind it is going to be inaccurate left and right just like your normal crosshair, but it will be close and for those long distance fights this dot is going to be perfect for the vandal but it's going to be very slightly above where most bullets are going to be going for the phantom meaning you want the dot right at the top of their head if you're using the vandal or just above it with the phantom but this is one of those perfect tips that's very low effort you can do it right now but it's not too distracting on the screen but it gives you that immediate benefit allowing you to initially start winning more of those fights if you already struggle with this but remember if you want to improve win more gunfights and get the rank you have always wanted then check out skillcapped.com link is in the description below but what do you guys think about spraying in Valorant or what's your biggest struggle or thing that you like about it? Let me know in the comments down below and while you're down there make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn those notification bells on because we here at Skillcapped have a ton more comprehensive premium guides coming your way that you're going to want to stay up to date with so you can stay ahead of the pack. As always I want to thank you for spending this little bit of your day with us and I'm Notorious Dub signing off.